she came home. Carlisle's lost an empire. You fall hard enough, you tend to be reminded of what truly matters. So, the end of the line. You ready for this? Are you? Who will you be without a score to settle? <laughs> I guess the world's most wanted fugitive will have to do. Alexa Carlyle is dead. According to the funeral invitation, that is. So naturally, it caused quite a stir when the late matriarch turned up at the breakfast table, alive and kicking. Carlyle, wisely sensing that her number is up, has emerged from exile to tie up loose ends and secure the Carlyle legacy. She may be a monster, but you have to admire her due diligence. Carlyle descends from an ancient line of warrior aristocrats. Her great-grandfather made a killing in the Second Opium War and established an empire in shipping, railroads, and newspaper publishing. While largely unknown to the public, the family still asserts its quiet dominance over global transport and logistics, media, and technology. Most senior of the partners, Alexa Carlyle, is cold as ice, tough as nails, and sharp as a razor. Incidentally, it was her late father who first brought the three families together after the end of World War II at this very house, meaning that this gentleman is the birthplace of Providence. It began here, and it ends here. Talk about poetic. One more thing. According to our intel, Carlyle keeps a case file on the constant, information that may be helpful in his recapture, so don't leave the estate without it. Right. Happy hunting, 47. See you on the other side. Thornbridge Manor. The Carlisle family's home for countless generations. The revenant Alexa Carlisle and her three adult children, younger brother Zachary, grandson and daughter-in-law, are all gathered to conduct Carlisle's sham funeral. Curiously, Carlisle summoned a famous London PI soon after arriving this morning, but his purpose at Thornbridge is yet unclear. Now, the target knows that you're coming, and her guard detail is top-notch. So Mr. Gray will secure their nearby field HQ and intercept all calls going in and out of the estate. Any appeal for backup is going to fall on very deaf ears. Good luck, gentlemen. I have an appointment with Madame Carlyle. Please wait. Mr. Whitmer is here to see Madame Carlyle. You can go right. Awesome. Hmm? That is Phineas Whitmer, the famous private investigator hired by Madame Carlyle this morning. I'm curious why he's here. Maybe you should do some detecting yourself, 47. A famous private investigator summoned by Alexa Carlyle has arrived at Thornbridge Manor. If you take his place, it may be an opportunity to get close to Madame Carlyle.
Mr. Whitmer, thank God you're here. Can I take you to Madame Carlyle? Yes, please. If you'd follow me. I know I oughtn't say anything, but I'm so relieved you're here. Everything's just so strange. Preparing for Madame's funeral, and then she turns up alive. But then the awful business with her brother Zachary, and, and all this security. I've never seen the place guarded like this, and, and, and I dare say I don't like it at all. Well, this is what I mean. You have to be patted down before you see Madame Carlyle inside. Oh, I could just cry. Please stay back. Sir, I need to pad you down if you want access to this area. Just stay calm, please. See? That wasn't so hard. Please proceed. Sir. Mr. Whitmer, thank you for coming on such short notice. A great tragedy has fallen upon us, and I need a quick resolution handled with absolute discretion. Results and discretion are my speciality. Very well. I suppose you will want to start at the crime scene. In my experience, a thorough examination of a potential crime scene is half the job done. Good. Fernsby will take over from here. I am Mr. Fernsby, the butler. Madame Carlyle has asked me to assist you in any way possible. Mr. Whitmer, I understand that you've traveled from London. Would you care for some refreshments? Or do you prefer to go straight to Mr. Zachary's sleeping quarters? I prefer to get started. As you wish. If you'll follow me, sir. I feel obliged to point out that current affairs surrounding Madame Carlyle are of a delicate nature. You may be familiar with the recent announcement of her death. You will probably learn that a staged funeral is scheduled to take place tomorrow. Madame's children were not informed until this morning that their mother was in fact not dead at all. So please bear with them if they seem affected Stop. by the rather unusual situation. I trust I do not need to remind you that there will be consequences if word gets out that Madame Carlyle is still alive. I'll consider her dead when I leave. Before you inspect the crime scene, I will tell you this. The case concerns the death of Mr. Zachary, Madame Carlyle's younger brother. He was found dead in his bed this morning. The door was locked from the inside, and a suicide letter was found in his room. However, Madame Carlyle suspects foul play and will not accept that he took his own life. I've prepared some information for you, so please do come and see me when you've finished your investigation of the crime scene. This is Mr. Zachary's room, to my right. A locked room murder mystery, 47. I trust you'll get to the bottom of this. Why don't you use your camera to scan the dead body, 47?
Throat markings indicate a rare, short-lived plant poison killed him. Spread shows time of death at around 10 o'clock last night. You do know your poisons, 47. Zachary's suicide note. Also, a sample of handwriting. It could be relevant to compare to other samples to establish its authenticity. Zachary was shopping for New Wellingtons last night. Not exactly what you would expect from someone suicidal. hidden door. It's a secret passage. This could explain how the door was locked from the inside. photocopy of the floor plans. Somebody's been researching the secret ins and outs of Thornbridge Manor. I believe you've done a thorough search of the crime scene, 47. Maybe it's time to see the butler. I'm curious about the information he's prepared for you.
Mr. Fernsby, I'm done with the crime scene. Did you establish a time of death? The night. Well, that means the staff were off duty. And Madame Carlyle and her security didn't arrive until this morning. That leaves Madame's family and myself as the only persons here when he died. And before you ask, no, I do not have an alibi. I was alone in my office at the time of death. Here is the material that I prepared for you. It's a list of the possible suspects and their quarters. Hopefully that will help you keep track of your findings. Please come and see me when you've solved the case, and I will take you to Madame Carlyle. This is very useful information, 47. So 41 guests will attend the funeral tomorrow. There's still a lot to see to, but we're in good time, I think. Wait for funeral tomorrow? Zachary found dead upstairs today. Death is everywhere. I never thought of it that way. Oh, God. It... Rosie, tell me what you did last night. I'm in trouble, aren't I? I... I spent the evening with Patrick. We met after dinner and I went home at one in the morning. He said he needed someone real to talk to. When he looks at you, it makes you feel like the center of the universe, like a real princess. But now he just ignores her. Well, he's under a lot of pressure. He's an idiot. That's what he is. Did you notice anything out of the ordinary? Any strangers outside the house? No, no, we saw no one outside, except Patrick's mother, Emma. We were sitting on the bench behind the greenhouse talking when she came out and um, we had to hide. You won't tell her about me and Patrick, will you? She'd insist Madame Carlyle fire me. I'm sure of it. Do right, she will. She's always going on about how things will change once she's in charge of Thornbridge Manor. Headache from all the decisions. I mean, pram or stroller, comforter or not. Should I ask her to marry me? What if she says no? You will think tomorrow. You'll be fine, Robbie. Kids are great. Did Alice tell you what Emma did when she arrived? What is it now? She scolded Mary for not making the bed the way she prefers it. It's so unfair. She just discovered Zachary's dead body and was all shook up. I tried to tell Emma, and do you know what she said? She said, things will change around here. I can promise you that. I saw her rearranging the photos in the sitting room, hiding Madame in the back, and then moving Montgomery to the front. 
She's not right in her head. Why would she do that? He died almost 50 years ago. Oh, thank God Madam Carlyle is still alive. Inside. Is everything ready for tomorrow? I can't deal with all this pretend funeral stuff right now. I know I have to, but Annie thinks she might be pregnant. It's gonna be a dad. Annie is a great man. You know her. And now a wee one on the way. I'd say you're one lucky bastard. I shouldn't gossip. But that Emma woman is a tad too busy for my taste. What is it? Elaine, she saw her on the top floor. You always led by example, rather than by words and meaningless gestures. Like hugs and encouragement. Professor Edward Carlyle, can you tell me your whereabouts for last night? Oh, yes, this dreadful business with Zachary. I stay at the local inn. You see, I prefer not to spend the night here at Thornbridge Manor. My brother Gregory came along for a nightcap. He'll never admit it, but I think he understands that I find this whole thing upsetting and wanted to provide some comfort. I believe we went to the stag's head around half past eight. Anything else I can do to help? Can you tell me about Zachary's behavior last night? I certainly didn't expect him to commit suicide. Sure, he was upset by a mother's supposed death. We were. But he seemed more engaged than usual. You should ask Rebecca. They had a long talk. Th did you know that he hadn't left Thornbridge Manor in nearly 50 years? His plants, mother, and the staff are all the company he had. If that's all, I have a speech to write. Did you notice anything else out of the ordinary? You mean, apart from the fact that we came here to bury our mother and she shows up alive and kicking? Zachary found dead in his bed this morning? Or perhaps that the planned funeral is still taking place and I have to do the eulogy? And Mother will surely have strong opinion on it afterwards. I, I can't breathe. Excuse me. Hugs and encouragement. Just a single spontaneous caress. That would have made. Right. I clearly remember when I was five. I climbed this way. Sir. Seems that help had finally arrived. But you went down immediately and said, when a grown up can do it, so can you, Ed. You are five, and climbing trees is supposed to be your area of... Gregory Carlyle. Can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Oh, you're wondering about my alibi, Mr. Detective. Well, um, I left Thornbridge around half eight for a pint with Edward. I wish I hadn't. <laughs> Quiz night at the inn. On the other hand, staying here with Zachary, my obnoxious sister, and the wife sporting another one of her headaches would have been a fate worse than death. <laughs> uh, the, the short of it, uh, Zachary was very much alive when we left. I stayed for the last shout, and I was back here just before midnight. Is that all? Not tell me about Zachary. Zach? Huh. 
Such a sad old sod. A bit heavy on the bottle, but who could blame him? The only company he had was his rare plants and mother, who travels more than she stays here. Honestly, I can't say which is the bigger ball. He's better off dead. Anything else you want to pry from my intricate intellect? Anything else you'd like to tell me? Nothing, really. I'm just enjoying the show. Our perfect mother obviously fucked up, didn't she? Faking her own death. You know, she's explained nothing to us. I think she's scared to own up to her own mistake. Emmer Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Surely I'm not a suspect. I need to account for everyone. Well, I spent the evening with my family, but I got an awful migraine and had to take to bed. Everyone can attest to that. I believe I went up when the boys sat down for a drink around eight o'clock. Is that all? How did you feel about Zachary? I might as well be honest. His presence was always awkward. How do you have a meaningful conversation with a man who only cares about plants? In my opinion, Alexa bears some responsibility for how this ended. She supported his self-limiting behavior by letting him live here. Anything else you want to know? Have you noticed anything else out of the ordinary? Nothing special comes to mind. Except, perhaps, I did get a feeling that Zachary was depressed, not just sad. I suppose he realized that he had no one with Alexa gone. Even Alexa must feel the pangs of guilt over that one, letting him believe she was dead. Then again, guilt isn't her strong suit. Rebecca Carlyle, can you tell me about yesterday evening? We don't really see much of each other, my brothers and I. I suppose it takes our mother's funeral to bring us together, and even then, it's not like we sit on each other's laps. Now, let's see. Patrick, Gregory's son, disappeared straight after dinner. You know, I think he might be in some sort of trouble. Edward wanted to go as well, but Gregory convinced him to stay for a few drinks before they went off for a pint at the local at a quarter to nine. I swear Gregory enjoys Edward's discomfort over staying here. I had a conference call with my New York office at nine, so I spent three hours on my laptop in my room and went straight to bed afterwards. I don't know about Emma. She did act a bit strange. You know, I bet she was making lists for changes needing to be done once she gets her hands on Thornbridge Manor. Quite the shock she had when Mother arrived during breakfast. Is there anything else you want to ask me? Tell me about Zachary. Did he act strange last night? You know, now you mention it, he was a lot more chatty than usual. He wanted to know about my connections in the publishing business. Apparently, a friend of his is writing a book. Which strikes me as very peculiar. I didn't think he had any friends. Is that everything, Mr. Whitmer? Anything else you feel like mentioning? I may be wrong, but I saw Mr. Fernsby, the butler, leave Zachary's room early this afternoon. And he seemed a bit startled when he saw me in the hallway. It's probably nothing. Oh, and one more thing. Please be kind to Edward. He can only take so much. Is there anything else you want to ask me? Looking good today, sir. Mr. Gregory, something's off. Pruitt got word he's going to be here. He signed the bloody thing four days ago. Sure, it'll sort itself 
Um, Gregory, don't say more to that weird detective than you need to. I'm just having a laugh, dear. I must admit, he's pretty good. What if he believes we had something to do with Zachary's death? Oh, please. He's circling us. I don't see him snooping around your sister. I bet Alexa said something. If I could be bothered, I'd be worried about your mental health, Emma. But sorry, I'm having too much fun enjoying the circus. Oh. Mother spent the last week at her Cypress estate. Am I right? I'm not at liberty to say, ma'am. Oh, come on. I need to know what's going on. This affects me too, you know. Yo, Anne, what's up? Relax, man. I said I'd get your money. It's just gonna take a little longer. Jeez, gotta go. Patrick Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Oh, shit, it's that sneaky butler, isn't it? He ratted me out. Elaine, give us some privacy, would you? Don't tell Mother, okay? She's really tense these days, and the last thing I need is more hassle. I took that pretty blonde, um, Rosie, uh, for an evening stroll. I, I mean, how the fuck am I expected to cope for an entire weekend in this shithole? I'm bored out of my mind. So, is that it? What did you think of Zachary? <laughs> Creepy as hell. No ambition. Imagine deciding to live in a museum. You know, father says Zachary and Alexa used to be two of a kind. He had a great future ahead of him. Then suddenly, he just gave up everything. What an idiot. Thank God daddy chose looks and brains over pedigree when he married mummy. I don't have to worry about the inbreedings her customary in these circles. If that's all, I think I'll get back to my slow death. Did you see anything suspicious last night? No. I reckon Zachary tops himself. I know I would have. Or perhaps Mr. Fernsby. I don't like him. He could have done it. Hey, 
Yes, but I think I... Oh, no. Right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Look at me getting all giddy. <laughs> it's like year 10 all over again. Just without the awkward slow dancing. Don't get your knickers all twisted. I'm telling you, she's not fit to be in charge anymore. How are you, sir? Aaron Ford Jr. calling. Five zero eight five. Uh, no, I need it immediately. Yes, I'll hold. Yes, I'm still here. I received Madame Carlyle. Mr. Whitmer, you found proof of what happened to my brother? No, not yet. Go and see Fernsby when you do. I received the vault token for the Milton Fitzpatrick London Bank. Did I understand correctly that I should give it to Rebecca in case of this matter? Exactly. She holds the other one. I want her to Sorry, have a no private eyes here, Mr. Falcone. Bye-bye. She will start digging when she realizes things don't add up, inevitably getting her in trouble. I'd rather she knew who she's up against. She's clever and resourceful. Who knows, maybe she'll be able to hit him where it hurts. But I don't want her to get involved prematurely. Hopefully, she'll never have to get involved you at want to all. Check on that, undertaker in that is the door to Rebecca's room. I can see from the log that Rebecca was in a conference call from 9 p.m. to midnight last night.
That is the door to Mr. Fernsby's office. So, how long have you been working here? About a month now. You're American. What on earth are you doing in this shithole? A girl like you belongs in clubs in London. I bet you're a great dancer. I don't like dancing. What about restaurants, then? You like food? I know some great places. You should come visit. I'll take you somewhere really nice. Spend a few bucks. A girl like you deserves that. I don't know. I Mr. should get back to my right, right, yeah. later. How's everything coming along, Helene? Very well. Mr. Fernsby. Make sure you focus on your work. I will. I don't think one more maid cries in the kitchen. So watch yourself. This is Emma and Gregory's room.
stupid. Stop acting like you think. Uh, who am I kidding? He's probably not looking for anything serious. myself like some sort of dickhead. I want to talk to you. A keychain pendant for the greenhouse. What's that doing in Emma and Gregory's room, I wonder? And why is the key missing? Now this is interesting, 47. A letter from Emma's mother stating that Emma is the illegitimate child of Alexa's late older brother, Montgomery. And listen to this. She claims to have witnessed Alexa and Zachary murder him. The plot thickens. <laughs> 